We now have Michael Tucker, uh, director of Fiveville, and with us, and I uh, want to thank you for taking our questions. Uh, I had a chance to see the film last night, and I was incredibly moved by the film. I, I mean, it's something that, that I wasn't really expecting, because you think it's just going to be a fight film, and, and you're just going to get the adrenaline that you get from just watching a, a boxing bout. But... As you get involved with the film, you find yourself rooting for the people in the film uh, and for their lives. Was that something you did purposely? Well, I think I mean, if you go back to sports movies, if you go back to boxing movies, people love these movies. They may not love boxing, they may not love sports, but they love these stories. I mean, that's what champions are. And people need champions. You know, people need examples to root for. They need... You know, filming in a place like Louisiana, where we film you know, life, adversity is a lifestyle there. I mean, these are guys, this is a hard knocks world, and those rising up stories, you know, overcoming difficulty in their life, those are, that's, that's why people have been going to movies, and since the 20s or the 30s, you know, it's no, it's no surprise that boxing, or like fight movies have always been a Hollywood staple, because it's, it's that the audience wants to root for someone. It's a need for a hero culture, like it's, right. it's, it's, a, it's it goes back to Spartacus, really. I mean, it, it, you could look at it, fighters have always been there, and and regardless of, of whether people might see some brutality involved in this, but there's also a certain art to it, there's also a certain, and there's certainly heart to it. Like, there's people that are coming from a working class background trying to survive in a doggy dog world. I mean. Is that something that you also see? Because your, your experience as a filmmaker was really a lot to do with soldiers. Do you find that these fighters are, are not very dissimilar? Well, I think you know, the military and certainly the, the world of a gym or the world of uh, mixed martial arts you know, at the professional level, you know, these are martial cultures. But I think even if you ask the fighters to be realistic, I draw a line and say there's a difference between being a soldier and being an athlete. Um, people like to use those metaphors when they talk about sports, and fighters love to use them. But for instance, Tim Crater, who's in our film, he's very careful, you know, to draw the line. These are two different things. Um, you know, they're both combat, but you know, the stakes are very, very different. Yeah, one can just simply end. And I, and I, and I don't like to confuse them. And uh, you know, but as far as you know, my experiences, you know, being you know around people in combat. Um, there's actually a different dynamic there, you know, and that dynamic, the people that you don't think would be brave are brave, and the people you think are brave often are not. Um, maybe that's a little bit similar to the fighting world also, that if you look at a guy like Tim Crater, you'd never expect this guy to be this tremendous fighter, but he, he is, you know, he's... You also see a lot of uh, doubt in some of the, the, you see them very committed, but then you see, like, how life gets into them, and and can literally get in the way of you becoming the best you can be. I mean, it's, it, 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 I think the, the power of your film has a lot to do with the fact that you're not just simply putting people in a ring and just going at it. You, you're, you're looking at a process of where they start from nothing to becoming something. And, and, and is that something that you're interested in, in, in showing to people? Like, why Louisiana? Why those fighters? I think we wanted to make something that wasn't, or as it turned out, as we were going through the process of making the film was, you know, is this a film about fighting or is it actually a film about being the best at something? And what has been great is people who don't know mixed martial arts, just normal mainstream audiences, when they see the film, it's great that they respond, they're inspired to see what can a person do just with their body, you know, what does it take to be devoted to something? And you can apply that to any part of your life and that's the strongest message of the film is being a better person through something. It doesn't. It just so happens to be fighting in this case. And, and this is something that that you see one fighter reaching the top, but then another fighter struggling to be this this person. To there's inner demons basically. And, and you make a point. I think you draw a, almost like a contrasting uh, correlation between them. Um, so. Is it fair to say then that, that fighting is just, it's not necessarily for everyone? Like that approach to life, I mean necessarily like, you're not always going to win no matter how much heart you put into it. Is that, is that a fair thing to say? Well, I think fighting, I mean, it's, 
know, is this microcosm of life. I mean, success is not for everyone because not everyone has what it takes to succeed. People, you know, they look at people who are successful and often say, oh, they made it, or, you know, there's envy and jealousy and a lot of hate sometimes, but, you know, are you willing to do what it takes to push yourself that far to be successful? I mean, that, that's, that's fighting right there. You just don't go out, you can be as talented as you want to be, but if you don't put in that work, you're not going to make it. And I think you really see that in the film. It, 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 it's, it, it seems so intimate, some of, what, some of the scenes. I, I was, how did you get them to trust you that much? Well, you know, when you make documentary films, I mean, that's the whole basis, is trust. And it's not so different um, to the relationship that a therapist has with a patient. I mean, getting them to open up and really truly expressing who they are and, um, and, 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 and seeing the true person. Not just when you first turn the camera on, you're getting something that's not real. It's how the person wants to project themselves to the world, not who they really are. And you have to slowly whittle that down to the essence, you know, who this person is. I, don't think yeah. really I also notice how beautiful the film is. I mean, it looks really incredible on the large screen. Uh, what was your thinking behind the shooting the fight scenes, for example, which have such an incredible, it's almost like a shiny, light to them. It feels like so vivid. I mean, because I've watched UFC on television, but the way, I mean, I, I wish they would use you to film those fights because, no, no, but there's something about that you can sense the physicality, that the speed, that there's something you just simply can't quite match if you compare the film to like a regular UFC, you know, broadcast. Well, I mean, there's something that's happened. If you look at classic fight films, if you look at classic fight photography, um, if you look at Lenny Riefenstahl, if you look at all these things, the physicality, the human form, these are beautiful things and it requires that it be lit right and that, it, that it's cinematic and what's been lost a lot in television, there's a difference actually between what I've seen on some Japanese promotions of mixed martial arts versus the American ones. The Japanese are very dramatic and they have these huge walkouts and right. it's this there's 60,000 people in the arena and it's, you know, it's insane. It's like ritual. That's what fighting is. And I think the UFC, I mean, they've done a huge amount for the sport, but it's to bring that art to it. I mean, right. Why, when we put on the Olympics, do we have like art directors and all these people involved? Because this is like, this is human spectacle and it requires artists to convey that physical artistry. I mean, that's... And I, I got that from the film because I think part of the, the visual aspect of it is what draws you in too and it makes you feel like you're literally with them. I mean, I felt at points during the film that I was going to get off my seat and start cheering for this guy. It's funny, but when, when I watch it, I often like get on the edge of my seat. I'm kind of, it makes you... But I, but I think because um, you know, Pedro, my co-director and I, because we didn't know anything about the world, mm -hmm. it allowed us kind of a more or less access to it and not to be... You know, we were out last night in Toronto at a bar, the fight hotel with all these big fighters around, and I'm, I don't know who they are. I'm like, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not, it's not that I'm not impressed, but I just don't know. I'm, I'm completely yeah. ignorant. So to just see it in human terms and just look at it honestly and think, you know, how would this look good? What's, and that's a good question. Because, I mean, that's, it brings a good question because I, I, is that the reason why you, you chose a, an up and coming as opposed to like a, one of the, the superstars of the sport? Well, we didn't walk into this saying we want to make a film about you know a great fighter. It was we want to make a film about a world, but we were very lucky that the people that we picked were so compelling and so articulate and also physically gifted and dedicated to do what they've done. Um, I don't think at this point, you know, the mainstream doesn't really know even what mixed martial arts is, and they're not in, going to be interested in stars. They're going to be interested in why should I pay attention to this sport? Why is this interesting? Why are these stories compelling? And that's that's the point. And I think you succeeded brilliantly with this film. And and do you think do you feel part of the of the fighters community now that you put their story out there? Oh, they've responded magnificently. I mean, I think they didn't know what to expect. They've seen a lot of films. They've seen... Sometimes it's really dumbed down. It makes it look stupid. It makes it look brutal and awful and just kind of kind of low-rent. 
Because I think it's, we want to take something and elevate it and go like, you're real athletes. Like, we want to capture you this, in this, this beautiful way and, you know, show how you express yourself. And I think when they, like when Tim and Dustin first saw the footage of themselves, they were like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And I think that's, that's mm -hmm. like when they were sold, like, it's, it, it, it's art. They're very charismatic it. people. Yeah, I mean, Tim is especially mm -hmm. special. Because it, it, and it, it, I think it helps dispel a couple of ideas that people may have about this being a brutal sport. I mean, it does have a brutal aspect to it, but there's this, these are people that are, thoughtful and are going into this knowing full well what they're getting into. Um, is it your perspective as a filmmaker, is it always to tell a story, uh, do not try to simplify the message? Is, is that something you always aim to, to do in well, your films? I think when you make films you also want to have something, you want to surprise people, and that it often that it's going to be, it's a contrarian thing. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing, and I don't, I don't, want to, I don't see the world as everyone else sees it. And, I think Albert Maisel's, the filmmaker, said, I mean, why would you make about a film about people you don't love? And, it, you know, I don't care who we're making a film about, it's often with very dif difficult, on the surface, even despicable people, but why would you invest a year or 18 months of your life into someone that you don't care about or don't love or don't have some kinship with because you've shared these experiences with them? And I think that's what you want to translate to the audience. I don't want to just make them feel comfortable with, oh, I went walking into the film and it was, it made me, it reinforced what I already believed. It's better that they feel challenged and um, it's great with the mainstream audience. I mean, again, I'm not a huge MMA fan. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even really care. But what I do care about is these guys. You want the human story. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting world and it, it deserves to be told right. And are you surprised by the, by the growth of, the, of that industry? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it offers something to young people that the culture doesn't. The culture is this very disembodied, you know, we're all dependent upon technology, we don't use our bodies anymore, we don't, we're, we don't physically engage with the world, and here's something that's it's pure and it's honest. And it's funny because that actually, that scares people. You know, it's, 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 we've grown accustomed to, like, disconnect from each other, and this is the only, probably the only way we can see it very up close. Yeah, and here you have something, it scares people, there's a certain kind of person that seeing this physicality, it scares them because they're not capable of it. They don't know that they're capable of it or they want to deny it, you know. And it's not so much the fighting part, it's like, what are you capable of doing physically? How far can you push yourself, you know? Incredible. Where are you showing the film next? Right now we're not sure. I mean, a lot's happening with the film and we're probably going to see a lot more of the film. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, what the reviews are in, and they're, they're overall fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I mean we could have picked a better place than Toronto to. Um, yeah, we, we premiered at South by Southwest, but I mean, Toronto is our favorite film city. And Make sure you get that in. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I, mean, I mean, are you. Do you see in your future making more films about fighters or people in, in extreme situations? I think we'll always gravitate to extremes, you know, where you have people and you need, you know, you need conflict. And that, I think that's also where you see who people really are, you know, where they're, they're where their guard is down, where they're vulnerable and, um, and that's interesting. And that's, that's, that's the only stories that you care to tell at this point. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to, there's so many things that you can make films about. I think. Often it's a problem when you're a filmmaker, you're like, oh, that would make a great film, but I mean, often it's not. It's, it's, you know, and, and this is, was a very special case. And, and, and so you've seen the response from the audiences now, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's that something that, that tells you that documentary filmmaking is it's here to stay. I mean, documentary filmmaking is not going anywhere, but I think it's a, it's a really challenging time right now because the whole model for the business is changing and, um, it's creating great opportunities, but it's creating, you have to completely rethink how you're going to reach audiences. And, um, you know, this, this kind of film was the perfect vehicle because I don't want to play films at film festivals for 300 people when you want to show them to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and those opportunities are getting better and better and better, but the industry is just figuring out how to do that. So it's definitely not going anywhere, but what's great is when you see a mainstream audience is often afraid of documentary. They're like, oh, it's a documentary, you know. 
Um, it's great to see a film that can play as well as a narrative feature. That's fantastic.